my name is Angel and welcome back oops, <laughs> to my little corner of the internet. Hi, it's currently June 2020 for anyone who wants a timeline for when this video was filmed. It won't go up by the end of June. I'm a little delirious. I did not get enough sleep last night, but I decided to sit down and film a video today. So that's what we're gonna do. Hey y'all, I'm editing this video and I went to look for clips for Train to Busan because it's still on Netflix, but I realized that this movie is way too gruesome for me to put like anything <laughs> on YouTube. So you're not getting any clips for this video either. I'm sorry, this is the second one in a row, but the clips will be back for the next one. I just don't feel comfortable putting clips from this movie in this video. So yeah. Enjoy! It's super short. It's only like 12 minutes, so you should be fine. Today we're going to be talking about Train to Busan. I've mentioned it a couple videos ago. Train to Busan was the first Korean media that I consumed that wasn't K-pop, because when I decided I wanted to learn Korean, I said, what is the easiest way to expose myself to a language that I'm teaching myself in a country, in a state, in a city where that language is not widely spoken? Now. When I watched Train to Busan, I was mad at my friends for a solid 24 hours after finishing it. Not because it was bad, it's a pretty good film. This is kind of my own fault. I didn't read the description before going into Train to Busan, and if you've watched Train to Busan, that was my first mistake. But you know, my friend said, watch Train to Busan, and I asked them what it was about, and like, I could have just read the description and found out what it was about, but they all just said, you know what, just watch it. And I was like, okay, sure. I found it on Netflix, didn't check the description at all. I don't even know what the description for this movie says. I'm not gonna do a character breakdown for this, because I don't remember anyone's name, and honestly, most of them die. Spoiler, so it doesn't really matter. To dad and his daughter, they meet a pregnant woman and her husband on the train, and those are essentially the only characters that matter. So yeah, let's get right into the plot, shall we? The movie begins on, I think, the eve of this child's birthday, and she, I think, is on the phone with her mother, and her mom and dad are split up. Her mom lives in Busan, she and her dad live in Seoul. After her phone call with her mother, basically she tells her dad that she wants to visit her mom in Busan for her birthday. And her dad is hesitant, but he wants to give his daughter this little birthday gift, so on the morning of her birthday, they hop on a train from Seoul to Busan. And, you know, everything's Honky dory kumbaya, they're chilling. Uh, they run into this couple who is like sitting next to them or something, and things are fine. And then, like, out of nowhere, if you didn't know what was gonna happen, this seems like super duper out of nowhere. And that's what happened to me because I didn't read a description before I watched this movie. I did this to myself. I'm not even gonna hold you. Anyway, <laughs> out of seemingly nowhere, there's a little bit of chaos outside of the train. There's like news articles and everyone's like, oh well, something's going on. There's a sickness going around town. That happened out of nowhere. And the people on the train are at first not aware of it. And then either the dad or the pregnant lady's husband gets a text message about it that the world, or at least South Korea, is going up in flames very quickly, and Busan has been turned into like a safe zone to ward against the zombie apocalypse that started like 10 minutes ago. I like the way this apocalypse just took over the country in like 10 minutes. I don't really know the logistics of a zombie apocalypse. That's not really my department. I'm not a super big apocalyptic Theorist. I don't really care about that kind of thing. If zombies came to my house tomorrow, at this point, anyway. Essentially, Busan has been turned into a safe zone, so if they can get to Busan, they should be fine. And initially, they're like, okay, well, we're on a train. We should be okay. Like, nothing's gonna happen to us here. We're not surrounded by people with the virus. And I don't remember whomst brought the virus onto the train, but surprise, there's a zombie on the train. And you know, for those of you Americans who have like watched The Walking Dead or I don't know what other zombie movies exist in America, but for those of you who watch The Walking Dead, your imagination of zombies is probably these like decaying creatures that walk at the speed of turtles and are like pretty incompetent, right? Yeah, Korea don't rock that way. <laughs> The zombies are like pretty chill at 
first? Like, okay. So the zombie gets on the train. Don't know how, don't know who brought the zombie on the train, who was the first zombie. And if I remember correctly, the zombie starts in one of the train cars that is full of a high school baseball team and some cheerleaders. And these zombies are... They're like walking dead zombies at first until they see a person. They took a traditional zombie, this mind-numbingly stupid creature that just kind of uh, and walks around, and then they like turn them into Usain Bolt with like the strength of the Hulk. <laughs> when they see a person, it's terrifying, okay? These zombies are like track star speed and for some reason like super strong. So on the train when this group of teenagers gets devoured by zombies, the rest of the train is terrified and validly so and the zombies are trying to break the door and I think they successfully break one of them, but then they get the idea, they're like, if they only act like this when they can see us, what if we cover the window with newspaper? So they cover the window with newspaper and they like rush towards the front of the train, far away from the car with the zombies because they think eventually the zombies are going to get through this door, put as much distance between us as possible. I don't know what's going on in like the train's version of a cockpit. I don't know if it's called that on a train. I know that's what it's called on a plane, but wherever the conductor sits, I don't know what's going on up there. I don't remember if they get somehow turned into zombies or if they're just unaware that their passenger count is slowly decaying but there's a bunch of people who get bit in the process of this train ride while the others are like you know trying to survive and then the train stops eventually and obviously the doors open they let everybody out this is an automated train system i'm assuming so they let everybody out and they're in a train station that's like half blocked off i don't know how like South Korea, in the concept of this movie, had like a contingency plan for a zombie apocalypse. I don't really know how everything got put together so quickly because like they turned Busan into a safe zone like fast as hell because like the zombie thing happened and this all happens in a day. <laughs> But basically this train station is like pretty much abandoned besides the people who just hopped off the train. The child, her father, and this husband and wife that they have like banded with have made it to a train station. The dad tells them that if they can make it to Busan, they will live. So the goal is just to make it to Busan. It is a train wreck of a situation because there's a army of zombified teenagers. This train station has all glass doors, which means some people get sacrificed in order for others to get through. They get through the doors. The zombie teenagers, they're not super smart. They're just fast and strong. So they keep bashing into the glass doors until they shatter. I think at this point, the husband sacrifices himself to try and fend off the zombies so that some people can survive. The dad, the pregnant girl, and his daughter are now traveling on foot. And you know, we big chilling for a little bit. And they're on like, I don't even know what these places are called. You know those places where they had like parts of trains on some tracks, but they're not going anywhere. They got like the head of a train and then a couple like train cars that are all like separate and on like three or four different rows of train tracks. Essentially, they're on like this train yard, I don't know what they're called, and there's a zombie out there. Don't know where he came from or what the hell he's doing there, but he's there. You have a like seven-year-old child, a pregnant woman, and a man who are trying to run from this zombie. They hide out in, you know, the, the front part of the train where the conductor sits. Yeah. They try to make their way to one of those so that they can like shut the door and hopefully the zombie will eventually lose interest and go away. I don't know exactly what the plan was, but the pregnant lady hops on first so that she can help the child up onto the train. The dad helps them both and then he ends up getting bit and I'm kind of mad because like this is in the last like five minutes of the movie. Like you mean to tell me they done traveled all this way, went through all that stress for him to get bit five minutes from the end? <laughs> I was a little bit livid, just a little bit. And he gets bit and she does some crying. She is in the child and the dad makes Miss Lady promise to get them both to Busan or whatever. And then he closes them in the train because he knows he's about to turn into a zombie. I don't 
really know why it took him so long to turn into a zombie and that's not even to be rude I just mean I thought this was like an instantaneous thing but we haven't seen this much interaction with someone post by pre zombification Eddie Hoosies he closes them in the train car he has some cute little glowy, halo-y, really white looking memories. And I think he just like falls off the end of the train. I think that was a choice. I think that was a choice he made right before he turned into a zombie. And this little train car that they're in is one of them little pumpy thingies. You know, the old timey trains that you just like pull the thingy to move it. Basically, the daughter and the pregnant woman make their way to Busan, and there's like a whole military barricade at the edge of the city, right? And the soldiers see them coming through a tunnel, and one of the soldiers gives the order, and he's like, hey, you should shoot them. And he's like, well, what if they're alive? And he's like, I'm not taking that chance because if they're not alive and they get too close, they could kill us all. But then the little girl starts singing and then they're like, oh, wait, they're human, they're alive. So they live and they make it to Busan. And then that's how the movie ends. But yeah, the, the movie was good. It was sad. And uh, if you choose to watch it, I mean, I've spoiled the whole plot. But if you decide to watch it, just know that you shouldn't get attached to anyone. And honestly, I feel like that's a good rule of thumb. Anyway. This has been Train to Busan in a nutshell. Wait, 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 wait. At the end of all of my videos, I drop a question for you guys to answer down below in the comment section. Today's question is, what did you do while in quarantine? Did you pick up a new skill? I did. I picked up makeup because I have a lot of it and I decided I wanted to learn how to use it properly. Tell me what you guys did with your quarantine because you were stuck in the house for at least two months. I'm sure you found some way to use your time and honestly you don't have to have done anything productive with it. If you just sat around watching Netflix, that's great. Self-care is important. If self-care for you is watching Netflix, then that's fine. Nobody had to come out of quarantine with a new skill or a new ability. For those of you who feel like you've been unproductive during quarantine, who cares? You just had to get through it. And congrats to you that did. And if you lost someone along the way, I'm really sorry. This was a sad end of the video question. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like this video, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you don't miss whenever the hell I upload next. Okay, bye!